we do a lot of work with Indigenous and Aboriginal groups. We do a lot of lengthy trials. Um, I, my first big trial that I did was way back in 2001, the, you know, the Silcoteen Nation and my, with, my first right? Aboriginal trial that's, too. Exactly. I think that's how you and I met and yeah. with Mr. Justice Vickers. And, you know, learning about language from a, in a very different way with the Aboriginal orthographies and um, how to capture the words in the transcript. And, and then, of course, over the last 20 years, having done more and more of that work and currently working on a, a huge case in Victoria, where I have, it's a real gift for me because I get... I have an opportunity now to, to learn and grow and develop my understanding of language from the First Nations perspective as well, which is, you know, usually, for instance, we would put Latin terms in italics or we would put foreign words in italics, foreign, define that however you would define that. If somebody used, a, you know, a French expression, laissez-faire or something along those lines, and they use it in the transcript, we would put it in italics just to indicate that it wasn't a native English word. Well, now, how does that work with First Nations language? And what we might think is appropriate in terms of grammar and style and punctuation for whoever writes the grammar, style, punctuation, you know, Chicago style manuals, what have you. That's, that's one perspective. But now let's make this relevant to the people who are, whose language we're actually applying these rules to. And so, you know, going back to what I was saying earlier about sort of keeping, being very open to growth and learning and development and, and, and understanding that maybe I haven't gotten it right all the time and now there's an opportunity to get it right is is a, a real gift i find in in this in the world of court reporting if you have an open mind and you're willing to learn then you know we don't need to capitalize everything we used to we don't need to put commas everywhere there's all kinds of different ways that we can punctuate that doesn't make it clunky and cumbersome and we need to be mindful about what we capitalize because capitalization matters and especially in law, because a lot of it, first of all, will uh, imply a defined term. Mm -hmm. So now, you know, lawyers are very used to that approach. But capitalization also uh, imparts a level of importance. And that is another thing we need to be mindful and sensitive to. So, it, you know, it's... I, you can, you're going to have to shut me up because you could, I could keep going on this for <laughs> days and days. It is, it's fascinating to me. And, you know, on my, on my team, I've got people who are trained, not just in, in English, but, but drilling down into parts of speech and drilling down into, you know, all of those fun words like dangling participles and, you know, all of those, you know, not way beyond the verb and the adjective and the conjunction and the preposition and really understanding how the language fits together, but now also applying modern day uh, sensitivities to it and sensibilities to it. It's, right. It's, it's so important. We and cultural. It, exactly, and cultural. But now, of course, as neutral parties to a proceeding, we've got to balance all of this with maintaining our impartiality. And, and also being really careful that we don't inadvertently get pulled into strategy. We don't want our transcripts to find themselves in a place where because we've chosen to capitalize something or we've chosen to italicize something, it's landing on a client or a party in a way that is now um, giving it a level of weight or meaning that, that we were not intending. We were just following our standard, you know, applying our typical standard grammar and punctuation, you know, conventional or traditional or contemporary or what whatever, which is why it's so important that if somebody comes to you and says, hey, you capping this word or you italicizing this word has a different meaning for this group of people and let's have a conversation. Right. And I welcome those conversations and I'm having them regularly.